We've seen already that we can schedule our jobs on a regular basis using cron, but that's reliant on the system being turned on. If, for example, we schedule a job at 3 o'clock in the morning and the system isn't on, then it's not going to occur with cron. We don't go back and rerun jobs. Whereas if we use anacron, we can schedule jobs to happen a certain number of minutes after the system has powered up. In this way, we can regularly have jobs occur, even if our system isn't turned on, which is ideal where we're talking about laptops and desktops. So let's look at how this could happen. So you can see then that I'm on the command line as the root user on my CentOS system. And if I go through and take a look at the forward slash etc forward slash anacron tab file, we can then go through and see, well, it's similar to our cron tab file. We set up variables to begin with. But when we look at the details of the job towards the bottom, the bottom three lines, we can see that we've got columns period in days, the delay in minute, the job identifier or the job name, and then the command. So let's go through and look at how we might edit this file. So if I use phi and I edit then my last argument, so that's going to be my anacron tab file. And we can then jump down to the bottom of the file with G and then O to insert a new line. So I can specify that maybe I want something to happen daily and maybe 45 minutes after system startup. So with this, then at least my, as long as my system is powered on, when I power it on 45 minutes afterwards, it's going to run then the job. So even though it might not actually run every day, because if you think with a laptop, it might be turned off for a few days over a weekend or something like that. When we turn on on a Monday morning, the job is going to complete, but 45 minutes after the power up. We can specify the job name, so we might just call it backup. And then for our backup job, then we might go through and tar minus C to create a backup file. File that we're going to write to, so we might choose to write to slash temp slash backup. And then we might want to backup, let's say, the service configuration directory, the etc directory. So in this way, we can ensure that so long as the machine is regularly being turned on, we are going to get regular backups. But even if you think if the system is not being turned on, then we don't really need to run the backup in any case. Whereas if we try to schedule this to happen, we're very much reliant on the system being turned on, and especially with laptops, and the fact that users might be t traveling around, that it's very difficult to try and get a time when this is going to happen. But even in a server system, we can see the three defined jobs can then go through and define when our cron daily, cron weekly, and cron monthly jobs are going to occur. And we can see that they're going to happen five minutes after startup, 25 minutes after startup, and 45 minutes after startup. But all of this then is really controlled by the period and days. So our daily is obviously one, and then our weekly is seven. We can see that we can use then a variable at monthly or a, a directive, if you like, that we can use. Because, of course, we can't really say every 28 days, which would be our shortest month. So we can use then this special identifier at monthly. Now, I don't really want to run this job. So if I go through now and escape and quit, without saving, then we don't have to worry about this occurring. When we look at our services, if I look at system CTL and then status on my cron D, so cron D in itself is a service and it's up and running and started when the system boots. However, if I go through and look inside the cron hourly directory, so forward slash etc cron dot hourly, and run a listing here, we can see that every hour cron will run the anacron service for us. If I go through and cat out this script, when I look at this script, remember when we look at these directories, cron hourly, cron daily, etc., these then are controlled a little bit by Anacron, but this is actually just running every hour on the hour. We can see when we look inside here, we've got our normal shebang. So here we're just running the ordinary born script. 
we're all, the first thing, it's commented so we can read it, is checking to see whether or not this has already run. If it has already run, there's no need to run it again. We only need to run it once to read in the jobs that we need to execute. We can then go through and see that we're checking to see if we're on battery power. And again, if we're on battery power, we're not going to run Anacron. And then we go through and run our Anacron daemon, so USR, SBIN, Anacron, minus S. So we don't have a service as such in the background for Anacron. We just go through and run the Anacron command once a day. Now we've seen then a little bit of how we can have jobs running on a regular basis. For those irregular jobs, we can look at the at daemon. So we're going to come back in the next set of slides to take a look at the at daemon.